Hi, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to discuss dive watches. As you can see, there's many variety out there. We're not going to talk about specific brands, but about what a dive watch can do for you. Primarily guys seem to think the watch will only show maybe the depth, uh, best case scenario depth and dive duration. But most important, in my opinion, is surface interval. So you need to know your depth, the duration, and surface interval. You don't realize this until you have one of these fancy watches that can do a surface interval. Um, the reason for that is you need to know how long to rest for. Now, if you're not using a watch and you've had a dive and you've surfaced, but just before surfacing you saw trophy fish, that rest period on the surface is gonna seem like forever. And the probabilities are you're not going to rest long enough. The Dive watch will give you actual surface time, which is very important in my opinion. There are many other parameters the watch show. Uh, the multiple dives, it'll log each and every one. Some of them you can download this, but I'll show you how a basic watch works. The watch I'm going to demo is one I wear. These are no longer available. I'm not pushing brand, I'm just showing you the basics, what a dive watch can do for you, and why it's really important, in my opinion, to dive with the watch because it makes your diving a lot safer. Okay, here we have the watch now submerged in a watch test tank. This is just to demonstrate what happens to the watch as you dive. The specific watch is set so that it'll activate at about 1.7, 1.8 meters in depth. As you can see, it's just working now like a normal watch has a time. I'm gonna increase the pressure now and you'll see how the watch changes. Before I start, just want to reiterate, I'm no expert. I'm just giving you what I know of watches and the experience I've had and uh, what works and what doesn't work and what you've got to be careful of. As I said previously, most important to know is your surface duration. This is to enable you to calculate the time you need to recover. Rule of thumb, guys tend to double their downtime. So if you spend one minute down, you would spend two minutes on the surface. That works probably for the average person. If you're very unfit, you'd need to extend that surface time. You need to try and breathe off as much of that CO2 as possible. Remember the CO2 is the gas that's going to create your urge to breathe, not the lack of oxygen, but the increase in CO2. So it's very important to vent that off as much as possible. So when you do dive, you're diving safe. Point of interest, if you can push a two minute dive time and it's right at your limit, you're gonna need much more than double that on the surface. Four or five times that before your CO2 levels come back to normal. It's way better to do a shorter dive and have shorter surface intervals. Um, for instance, if you did a 15 second downtime, you'd probably only need one breath on the surface to do that again. Obviously, if you're diving very deep, you're gonna need more than 15 seconds. Um, I find one and a half to, at the most, two minute, um, a good time for me when I'm in a fit state. Also take into account mammalian reflex. Many people take quite a while for this to kick in. Uh, you can Google that, I'm no expert on it. I take a good 10 to 15 hours before I'm properly relaxed and the mammalian reflex is kicked in and my breath hold is good. My first few dives are never great, 15, 20 seconds before the urge to breathe is strong. Um, once you get into that relaxed state, 10 to 15 dives or so, you can then watch your downtime and try and don't use the watch to calculate how long you should be down. Make sure you're not looking at your watch for that. You need to know how you feel. You must surface when you need to surface, not when the watch tells you. You may think, but I can easily hold my breath for two minutes. I've only been down for one minute. I need to stay another minute. Don't do that. You must feel how you feel. Your CO2 will be rising and that will give you the urge to breathe. This can also vary from day to day. Um, your uh, metabolism, what you've had the night before, many factors can vary this. So try not to watch the watch whilst you're at the dive. The only one you probably need to look at is the depth. And the only time you'll need to look at the depth is if you're trying to search for a reef. You may land on sand. The sand is deeper than the reef. And you know that the reef is a bit shallower, so you would swim shallower to try and find it, depending on the shape of your 
bottom profile. That's the only time I ever look at it. Um, so, as I said, I'm no expert. Please don't take this as gospel. You must work with what works for you. Point of interest, if you are diving till you're comfortable and you surface and you double your surface time, four or five dives in, you suddenly realize your downtime is getting shorter and shorter. This is an indication that you're not spending enough time on the surface. So this watch will, once you've used it a few times, becomes a very good management tool to give you an indication on how you're feeling. Many guys suffer with headaches and uh, a headache can quite easily be caused from uh, continuous high CO2 loads. Um, so this watch should prevent that and should give you an indication of whether your dives are getting shorter and shorter. If they are, extend your surface interval, be properly relaxed and then continue diving and you'll see your downtimes will increase. So here it goes. As you see, the watch is in its normal mode. This one is set to auto start when it gets wet. There we go. As soon as you've gone down a certain depth, it will start to register your dive. Start, this one goes at about 1.8 at the moment. It starts a dive. Your dive time will then start calculating. As I pressurize it more and more, so the depth increases. All it's reading is pressure. And now I get to about 10 meters, look around for fish, spend some time down there, and then slowly surface. Release that a little bit faster than I should have, but there you can see. First dive down, max depth 10.7, but most important, my down time was 54 seconds. You don't be looking at this straight away, your first surface, relax, have a few breaths, then when you're ready, have a look at the dive time. Now you see it, 54 seconds, do a mental calculation, double that to about two minutes. Obviously this is relative to your fitness. And when you're ready, take a second dive. I'm not gonna wait on the surface now, I'm gonna repressurize it. There we go, back to 1.8 and down we go again. So whilst you're diving, you can clearly see the depth you're at. If you need to look at that quickly, you can. Dive time, don't look at that. See how you feel. There we're at about 12 meters. Stay down for more or less one minute and then resurface. There we go. Watch move momentarily there. There you have it. That's dive number two. Duration was just on a minute. You've had a few breaths, you're now nice and relaxed. Have a look at your watch. You're down just on a minute. You saw the depth you were at. Preferably spend two minutes on the surface. Away you go again. Excuse the shadows you might see as I move the lever, you can see it come across the screen. Very simple system. Just reads your pressure. Now 10 meters again, your urge to breathe is now coming again. Obviously this is for a person who's got about a one minute breath hold. So we slowly resurface. Oh, if I can get it, there we go. There the pressure's off again. So now that logs three dives. And so that will keep going for the calendar day you're at. If you come back tomorrow, you'll see it'll go back to one. Most of these watches will have this feature. So end of the day, you can go into your history and you can see you have done 30, 40 or 50 dives during the day. And uh, some of them will actually give you a total bottom time. It will also give you the maximum dive you've had, uh, maximum depth you've been. So all of those are just points of interest. But for me, most importantly, is that surface interval. And you won't know this unless you have a watch. Surface interval, by far the best feature of these modern day um, dive watches. So if you're going to buy a watch, make sure it has that feature. Well, there you have it. I hope that helps. Stand by for the next video.